So back into good posture <clears throat> and just settle. And back to the breath. Imagining that everything that has come before is just settling and digesting. No need to interfere with it. Just staying very simple and direct on your breath. and revive your motivation. Bodhicitta for the welfare of all sentient beings. Refuge, inner and outer. Just touch back into your motivation. And now we shift to analysis. And there will be things on the screen, but you don't need to look at them. They're just a reference if you get distracted. Start by thinking about the action of killing. Taking life, disregarding life. One of the results is a short life and poor health. So we ask ourselves, do we have poor health? Of course, there are many conditions that contribute to poor health. But we also know many people who eat nothing but junk food and never exercise and are still somehow incredibly healthy. And we know people who eat perfectly, only organic, perfectly vegetarian, exercise all the time, and still somehow have ill health. So even though diet and exercise are important conditions, they're not the substantial cause of health. Protecting life is. So just looking at your own relationship with life. If we're in a place with strife and war, or where food and drink aren't healthy, or medicine is not potent, or doesn't work for us, this is all from killing karma. So just see if you can relate any of that to your personal experience.
And then think about your relationship with stealing or taking what hasn't been freely offered or taking for granted the possessions of others or not returning what you've borrowed or thinking if no one notices or it's a victimless crime that somehow it's not stealing. Maybe certain things from the internet, maybe supplies from work, maybe misuse of family goods. But just look at your own relationship to stealing with some objectivity, not going into a shame spiral, but just very honest. From stealing, we have poverty, or our things are stolen, or we have trouble using them, they break. We might live in a poor place with many dangers, droughts, floods, poor harvests, natural disasters, forest fires. So make it very personal. Is there a habit of this still within my mental continuum? And if so, what does it look like? And then checking in with our own pattern of sexual misconduct, unwise or unkind sexual behavior, betrayal. This results in disagreeable or unfaithful spouse, disharmony in the marriage, living in a dirty place with poor sanitation, bad odors and misery, or just a general lack of trust. Again, with objectivity, without falling into a story, take an honest look. And we shift from physical actions that create negative karma to verbal actions. Looking at our own tendency of lying with intentional deception or divisiveness may be true, but is meant to split. How do we use our speech that might not be ideal? and still investigating speech, are there habits of harshness? 
It might be true, but it's not kind. Or idleness, it's unnecessary or frivolous. Gossipy, maybe. Just take a really general look in an ordinary day. What seems positive and worth keeping and what might be negative and worth working on. Because all of this speech leads to receiving similar things. And with negative speech, the environment is difficult to navigate, can be dangerous. And shifting from speech to mind, the main negativities of mind boil down to covetousness, malice, and wrong views related to attachment, anger, and ignorance. What habits within the mind that are negative do we actually nourish, that we actually feed and keep going? not just the arisal of them, but the giving in, which creates a habit of more of the same and the experience of it. And if you were to make a guess, which one of those three is most common for you as an individual? Is it covetousness and strong desire? Is it malice, ill will, anger, irritability and annoyance? Or is it wrong views, a fog of confusion, a series of superstitions and conspiracies? Do you have a dominant one? And so think to yourself, through seeing these patterns in myself more clearly, may I interrupt their momentum. May I prevent them as much as I can. And in this way, not harming myself, not harming others, and actually moving towards the fulfillment of my potential. And dedicating, may the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen, arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. May the precious view of emptiness that has not arisen, arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. And you can relax your attention. Okay, so thanks everyone.